Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and today I'm going to do a few review videos uh, from Zigbee products that I received from Momobids and uh, these are going to be separate videos but I'm just going to do them together and first of all I received this uh, temperature and humidity sensor secondly I've also received this uh, Zigbee relay module so this is very similar to like a son of SV which uh, uh, can be run from you know low voltages like 5 volts uh, using the micro USB or uh, I think it's 7 to 32 volts DC or AC here so this is just a simple relay like a one single output and I have a slightly different version of that which has two outputs is also from uh, operated from a lower voltage as well so but let's start with the temperature and the humidity sensor and because I have a Tuya Zigbee gateway and I also have a Sonoff Zigbee gateway, I'm going to be testing in both systems. First, let's have a quick look at this device and also, well, we might as well just do the unboxing as well. Um, I have seen this type of uh, Zigbee sensor in quite a, uh, quite a few other YouTube videos and it looks like that this is some sort of OEM product which is being sold by, you know, different... Uh, uh, ecosystems. Uh, I've recently seen a, a guy from the UK and he bought some stuff from Lidl in the UK and he got the same temperature sensor. So I believe that uh, uh, it's being, well it is available or the very same model is available from many different sources but being Zigbee you know it's not really linked to any particular ecosystem and well this, this is a general size and this design has these really thin uh, letters or sorry numbers or icons which uh, it could be a little bit difficult to read if you have issues with your eyesight but it also makes it stylish so it's really up to your you know it's your preference whether you like this design or not obviously it shows the temperature and the humidity and that's pretty much it it shows you the battery um, state up here and there is another icon once it is connected to the Zigbee network you also get this uh, stand that you can put in here so it can stand on a desk like that and also if you rotate this back cover I'm going to use this stand to rotate it then you can remove the back cover and you have the two uh, AAA batteries which was supplied for this unit so you just need to um, well I mean it was packaged separately so you just remove it from the packaging and you install it and you are ready to go and besides this you get a 3M tape so this is if you want to mount it on a wall, then you can stick the 3M tape here, double-sided tape, and then you put it on your wall. And you also have a small manual. It's in a single language, so it's all in English, which tells you how you install the battery and then how you pair this with, you know, your device, sorry, with your Zigbee gateway. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to install it with Tuya first and then we are going to see you know how that works in the Tuya ecosystem and I will do the same in EV Link as well. So we work we see how it works with Sonoff. And for the Tuya I have the Blitzwolf BWIS1 as the Zigbee gateway and I I made a separate video on that and I know that uh, that model is no longer available so it's now the BWIS10 but it should pretty much be the same. So I just select that device so I can see all the Zigbee devices that are linked to that Zigbee gateway or Zigbee hub and I put this uh, temperature sensor into pairing mode. Uh, interestingly there is a button here but there is also a button here on the top so you just have to press it for more than five seconds and it starts blinking so you can see that the wireless icon is blinking and I can add a sub device on my Zigbee hub so we just have to wait for a few minutes ah sorry not minutes maybe seconds and then this device would get paired with the gateway and it is discovered so I'm just going to get it done and uh, I'm just going to leave it as temperature and humidity sensor and maybe I'll put it into the living room okay and when I go into my living room I can see my temperature and the humidity sensor and when I click on it I can see the device details so it shows me the temperature and the humidity pretty much what I can see on the screen as well it looks like that the app is only showing the you know the temperature and the humidity in uh, without any decimals 
but uh, we can see the same data that we see on the screen. You have this big icon in the middle of the screen, which doesn't really do anything. And you have a couple of buttons on the bottom. So you have history, so you can see some, you know, temperature history. So as you can see, you can go by, you know, date or a month or a year. I mean, of course, I don't really have any history here. So, so that's going to be useful for us at the moment. You also have notifications. So you can turn off the notification for this device, for example, the low battery notification. And also you have a separate button here for the battery, which is not really a button. It just shows you the battery percentage in an icon. So you can see it's pretty much full. If I go to the device details, well, there is not much here. Of course, you can rename it. You can change the icon. You can put it into a different room. And then you can also share this device if you want to share it with uh, other users. But um, to be honest, that's pretty much it. So let's see what we can do with this device in the automation. So if I create a new automation, I mean, of course, this is a sensor. So we can use some, you know, events or triggers with this sensor to create an automation. We can't really, you know, that's not going to control anything. So when I'm setting up an automation, I'm going to see what triggers it supports. So I'm going to select here when the device status changes in the temperature and the humidity sensor. And as you would expect, you have three different events. Well, I'm going to tackle the easiest one first. So you can have an event on the battery percent, uh, sorry, on the battery state. I'm not really sure why it shows 500 as the top of the scale, but um, you know, this is a percentage. So you can create something like, you know, if the battery percentage is less than, I don't know, 7% or sorry, 17%, then you do something like you send yourself a notification. To be honest, I don't think it's going to be used a lot because there is built-in notification for low battery voltage. So you don't really have to do anything. But if you want to use it as a thermostat, you can create a condition. Let's say if the temperature is less than ooh, minus 20, that would be that would be chilly. So if the battery temperature is less than oh Jesus, yeah, you can uh, you can set it by one hundredths of a Celsius, then you can create a um, automation like this. So now it says if the temperature is less than 21 degrees, then I can do something. For example, I can run device and I can turn on the uh, relay. So this uh, BWSS4 is just a Wi-Fi relay and I can turn it on. So this could be a very simple thermostat. So if the temperature drops below a certain value, then you turn on a relay, which let's say it's going to turn you on your, uh, turn on your heater, but you can do the same with uh, a humidity. Let's say if the humidity goes above like, you know, 60, 70%, then you turn again on a relay, which let's say is a fan, and then you can ventilate, for example, a greenhouse or something like that. So that's how you do the uh, automation. And of course you can do, you know, multiple conditions here. So I, if I just add plus on the condition, uh, then uh, you can still uh, pick the same device even. And uh, let's say you also want to put uh, something on the humidity. So of course, let's say if the humidity also is bigger than, you know, I don't know, let's say 75%. And up here you can uh, say whether any of these conditions need to be met or both of the conditions need to be met. So yeah, I ch and change it to when all conditions met. So it means that this relay is only going to turn on if the temperature drops below 21 degrees or above 75% relative humidity. So that's one type of application that you can do or one type of automation. And of course, this is only going to control, let's say, turning on the relay. If you want to do uh, as a, you know, like a temperature control, you have to create another automation when it's going to turn off. So let's say if it's... Uh, if this is a heater, then you turn it off once it reaches 22 or 23 degrees. As you can see, everything is in uh, Celsius at the moment. And to be honest, I haven't found a way to change that to Fahrenheit. So if I'm here on the screen, there is no options here to change the unit of measure. And if I go outside into me and then I click on the cogwheel 
and if I select the temperature unit, I I've already changed this to Fahrenheit, but it doesn't seem to make an impact on the application. So if I go back, it still shows me everything in Celsius. I even left the application and that still doesn't seem to make a difference. So if you know how to do that for my US viewers, just uh, please let me leave a link in the video description, uh, sorry, in the comment section below. Now we have completed the TUIA setup. Let's see how this application works in EVLink. So um, back in the EVLink application, I have my Zigbee bridge running. As you can see, it has a couple of devices connected to it. So I'm just going to initiate the pairing again. I'm just going to click on this button and wait until the that sort of Wi-Fi icon starts flashing, which it does now. So I click on add and then we just wait for this device to be discovered. The son of Zigbee bridge is right behind me. And I did a separate video on how the Zigbee, son of Zigbee bridge works and how you set it up. Yeah, one device is found. And because son of also has a temperature and the humidity sensor, I would expect that this is going to work just fine. And as you can see, I have a new device here. So EVLink doesn't uh, offer me to change the name in the beginning. So it just gives this random name of device something. But if I go into the details, I can see the temperature and the humidity. And in fact, this also shows me the, uh, the decimal places. So 24.2 degrees and 43% humidity. And I can also see that the battery voltage is high. And if I go into the details, I can rename this. So Mumubis temp. I'm just going to leave it like that and you can assign it to a specific location. Let's, I'm going to put this into the living room as well. So now if I go back to my living room, I should be able to see my temperature sensor. Ah, yeah, it's here. So Moomoobie's temperature and you can see the temperature and the humidity here. You can see it here as well. So now with the EV link, we can see that we are getting a slightly bit more data as in the you know, the, the temperature and the humidity both, uh, both shows a percentage as well, sorry, the uh, decimal place as well. But um, to be honest, there is not, mu not much else in the screen. You can just, you know, you look at the data. If I go into the details, I can just see, you know, the device name, the location and the device ID. There is no history here in the EVLink application. Um, you can't, yeah, you can't do anything else just to look at the data. So probably the only thing which is left for us is to see how the scenes work. I mean, I would expect that that would be very similar to the Tuya. Again, there are no actions on this device because it doesn't really action anything. So let's see how it responds to various triggers. So I click plus on triggers and I select smart device and Moomoobie's temp. And as we would expect, we have two options, temperature and humidity. And here the, uh, the view is slightly bit different. So you can uh, specify a condition whether the temperature is over or below a certain uh, percentage. So if you want to say if the temperature is over 21 degrees or let's say, I don't know, let's say 25, uh, then let's say you want to turn on an AC or a fan. But if you are, want to use it for a heating application, then you turn this off and you turn this one on. And let's say if the temperature drops below 21 degrees, you don't have a slider here. You can just enter the value, which is, I think it's, it's probably a little bit easier, especially that, you know, Tuya has this two decimal place, place rubbish, which is absolutely useless. But anyway, <clears throat> so now if the temperature is above 21 degrees, and then you can pretty much do the same in humidity. So you can specify an upper threshold or a lower threshold, and then using the sliders, you can specify whether you want the upper or the lower threshold to be applied. So in this scenario, I'm just going to leave, you know, temperature. So if the temperature is bigger than 21 degrees, then we need to do something. For example, again, we turn off, uh, or so turn on a son of relay. So smart device and, um, which one should I choose? I have a Zigbee, Zigbee basic here, so I can turn that one on. So let's say if this is an automation for a fan, sorry, I think uh, for a boiler, then we specified what is the temperature when the boiler should turn on. And let's say the, you know, the Zigbee basic is connected to the boiler, like, you know, maybe that's the contact where it gets the a signal to turn the boiler on, or maybe it's just a simple fan with a heater, then you turn it on with a Zigbee basic, and that's your automation. 
turn heat on. And with this, you are done and you can just take this uh, unit everywhere in the house where you, you know, let's say the coldest room and that's going to, you know, control your heating. And of course, that's only going to turn on the heating. If you want to turn it off, you have to create another scene where you specify the sorts of the upper threshold for the temperature, and then you turn the same device off that we just done here. So the, uh, in my case, it was the Zigbee Basic. But as you can see, it is a fairly simple device. I mean, after all, this is a temperature and the humidity sensor. So besides looking at the temperature and the humidity on the screen, you can create simple automations, both in Tuya and EV-Link, where you create a condition based on temperature or the humidity or both of them, uh, either going above or below a certain value. If you are interested in this product, I'm going to leave purchasing links in the video description. But I think that would be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.